Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sonic Talk Live. Uh, we actually only uh, back after uh, a week out, uh, just a brief week. It feels like an age when you just have to get it all going again. It just feels like I've kind of lost lost the knack. But after a brief bit of technical shenanigans, we're back. This is honestly uh, the podcast which talks about things, music production, electronic music, synthesizers, drum machines, all kinds of stuff, playing live in the studio, software, whatever you like, really. There's a whole bunch to choose some remember if this is the first time you've been here please do come along and subscribe to our youtube channel uh, sonicstate.com forward slash live you can find details there uh, which is sonic state on youtube or on itunes sonic talk all of that kind of stuff anyway welcome everybody we got a bit of a, a special week this week because obviously um with the internet just seems to be full of one thing and that is the behringer deep mind 12 which uh, as we know has been breaking the internet i think the gear sluts forum is up to about nearly 190 pages 186 <laughs> pages on this one topic uh i'm trying to think what else is going i mean there's just it's 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 crazy and as we know there's been a lot of uh stuff announced in fact this very morning we posted a video from mr alet alders who i will say is our first guest there alet alders who's in utrecht Hello. at yes. studio stecker at his sonar traffic synth cave how are you Alec, thank I'm you for fine. The, thank you for the video, by the way. This yeah, that was fun to do. Yeah, good, and uh, I much appreciate. It. Uh, of course, uh, your synth cave is not actually getting the justice it deserves there because it's a room actually stuffed full of synthesizers. One of which is his other video. Yeah, we've seen them before. We did the walkthrough, so you can see it. Nothing yeah. special. Uh, anyway, um, that is at the moment. There's a, a, a week long kind of studio electronic music collaboration where people get to kind of it's kind of like synth library almost. Check out a synth, you know, record with it, collaborate with an artist, all that sort of stuff. So uh, do check out some of the coverage there. We'll, we'll come back to you in a sec. I'm just going to announce everybody. Ty Unwin. Look, he's still alive. Hey. He's actually not looking too tired as well. Ty Unwin is a film composer, a TV composer who is insanely busy i know you've been very busy recently nice to have you ty how are you it's good to be back it feels like forever since i've been been on it is so, yeah i i i suspect the olympics are affecting your internet connection a little bit last time we spoke uh, it was actually euro 2016 which was it was and my matt ted room a little bit but i uh, will we'll bear with it uh, and okay. anyway, thank you very much for joining us, Ty. It's been a pleasure. As uh, well, it is a pleasure, not being a pleasure, because you haven't been on yet. We'll see if it's a pleasure or not. I'll be the judge of that. Wait, I just said that. <laughs> anyway, and also we have Mr. Dave Spears, who is it also in his synth cave. Dave Spears from G4Software.com and uh, Collector. Oh my God, that doesn't look very well. There's one over your uh, right shoulder or left shoulder that looks like it's in pieces. What's going on? Being fixed. Ah, right. Okay. Being fixed, as in, yeah, taken to pieces. Are you just airing the capacitors? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, Dave Spears, uh, synth expert, synth collector. How are you, Dave? It's been a while for you, too. You've been on holiday. You're actually looking brown. You haven't had any sun around here, that's for sure. No. Yeah, I went away. Wow. Hooray! That was, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> It was like a dream. Yeah, when you get back, it feels yeah. like you haven't gone. I know that feeling. Yes. There is life outside these four walls. It's weird. Absolutely. Uh, it's a rumour. It's a rumour, yeah. Ty, you, you sh <laughs> as if you should know. Uh, we, uh, we can't see your bed and kitchenette in the corner, can we? Yeah. <laughs> and the bars on the door that stop you from leaving. Yeah, that's it. That's anyway, well, let's get straight to it. I mean, basically... Um, Obviously, th there's been a, a prolonged series of teasers, uh, and now we're sort of getting product information, although they seem to be considered to be teasers, but uh, we've had, uh, what was it, DCOs and VCFs. I'm presuming there will be more. Uh, but we also spoke to Alert, who uh, has been designing patches, right? And you were in the first teaser, too. So yeah. you've, you've had a bit of exposure to this. I mean, part of the reason you're here is so that people can ask questions and figure out, you know, how... Absolutely. Uh, what what you're making of it and and i guess the thing is the first thing about the synth is you know what i mean get the first thing out of the way is it's behringer everybody is talking about build quality construction reliability and that sort of thing so perhaps you could start kick off with that one um well sturdy metal case uh wood like sides uh, a good keyboard faders feel um Juno ish, as I said in the video. Um, somebody was saying the knobs looked um, uh, a bit shabby, but they're actually they're, they're easy presses. Uh, it's more my, I think it was a bit, bit more my uh, my own nerves that 
got the wrong button. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was you shaking, not the controls. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Well, you can I, imagine the days here during the sticker week are pretty long. And uh, yeah, well, no, we appreciate that. Very healthy. All we time. appreciate that. So, right. I mean, what we do know about the synth, we know it's twelve voice analog, right? We know it's mono timbral. That's one thing that's been coming yes, up a lot. Yes. So, I guess another question is, people sort of say, well, why has it got 12 voices then? But, I mean, when you play a synth with a lot of poly, it does open up uh, the options an awful lot, because you don't find yourself stealing notes or anything, right? Exactly. I mean, the options for, for, for ambient patches, you know, with long decays, long releases, I mean, uh, suddenly uh, get, got a little, lot higher. Also, um, can't promote the unison thing enough uh, if you put it in unison 2 you get a six voice synth with four oscillators per voice um that sounds pretty nice i'd say oh that was something, I hear something yeah go on then um i was getting a i'll get a string sound uh somewhere here like this one yeah this one is six voice polyphonic is it loud enough yeah yeah i can hear it Again, I'm not a keyboard player. So it's got a detuned fader, has it? Yeah. So you can go... Very extreme. Low detune. And what we found out yesterday, you can modulate the detuning. Right, okay. It's a modulation uh, uh, destination in a mod matrix. Right, I mean, that's one thing that seems to come up is there are, you know, many, 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 many modulation destination uh, yeah. si situations, yeah. which I think is something that's quite... And, and that, you know, some people have been saying, oh, it's a bit like a VST. And in, in fact, some in some ways, that mm -hmm. kind of level of detail <clears throat> is quite sort of uh, um, influenced by what you can do in common... Uh, in, in software, I suppose, because the software is controlling it, right? Yeah, I think actually that's a nice thing about you know a modern synth uh, on an old analog poly uh, you wouldn't have the computing power to do all these uh, deeper uh, modulation routings uh, today that's really easy um, the thing is and I uh, really thought this was important to say is you can actually you don't have to do that you can still use it as a, a, a pretty basic synth not going into the menus but if you want you can go into the menus and there's a lot of options to uh, shape your sound. Okay. Um, yeah. Gentlemen, is anything, have, have you got any burning questions that you would care to ask? I mean, there are going to be some coming up from the chat room, I'm sure, at some point. So uh, that, that was something that uh, I just wondered whether... Ty, I know you're an avid purchaser of, uh, of la latest synths. Are you starting to consider your uh, credit card balance? Or, uh, uh, I mean, I, 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 we think towards the end of the year, probably for this, so that Uli has said, apparently, in the Gear Sluts forum. I think the one thing that we, you know, kind of that needs to keep being addressed with this is uh, really it all came down to how much they were going to put it out for money wise. Yeah. I think really that is the bottom line because. Uh, right from the first teaser, you could hear that it was it sounded it sounded good. I mean, you know, some some things that have come out of it sound really good. Some things that have come out of it sound unremarkable. But the reality is that it was always to do with what the price was going to be. And you have to sit there and go, if they're going to, they are going to do it for a thousand dollars, which kind of everyone wanted them to be able to do. Um, you know, for a thousand dollars. I mean, it's amazing. It is amazing, really. Just the fact. I mean, what I do need to ask is. I mean, there's been all this talk about discrete components. It's not just circuit boards. Is it? I mean, I'm struggling to get my head around the fact that they can really do discrete components for a thousand dollars. That's what yeah. I'm struggling to get my head around. One, I mean, one of get, the things get, about like, this. Like, sorry. Second, sorry. One of the things. I, I think I haven't looked inside the machine. Obviously, um, uh, the, the, I think one of the positive things is Behringer has his own manufacturing uh, plants. You know, they they do make chips of their own, so they make components of their own, don't they? I think um, I don't know if they make their that. I think they own some companies that make some chips, but I don't know if they manufacture custom chips or not. I mean, I have no right. idea. But uh, I mean, I think that the word has been four thousand discrete components. I mean, I mean, there must be some microchips in there, but obviously the DSP is going to be on chips, yes, and I guess of course, yeah. some of the uh, the controller stuff for controlling CVs is going to be on mm. chips. But maybe the voice boards, there's a lot of discrete components. Yeah. I don't know. That is interesting. It's 
Well, it, it, it is because, you know, I mean, I've, I have uh, some close contact with certain companies that, that, you know, make sense with discrete components. A lot of my stuff has discrete components and, and you know, it, make, it's, it's, it makes a difference. Um, I just don't, I, 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 it's fantastic that they can and I hope it is, but um, I don't know, I honestly don't know quite what to, to, to say about it, only because I want it to be fantastic and, you know, even if it's only quite good, but <laughs> again, for that kind of money, for someone buying a proper, a proper analog synth uh, with full size keys, with memories, with 12 voices, it, whichever way you look at it, it's amazing. It is amazing. But, I mean, all this rubbish that's been flown around now saying that all the other manufacturers now need to, you know, they're all going to go under and, you know, DSi and Modal and Moog, they're all going to go under because Behringer has suddenly come on the on the scene with a synth. I mean, that's all just absolute codswallet because at the end of the day, you know, Roland back in 1982 or whatever it was when they bought out the SH-101, or the wasp you know kind of the you know we're talking these were when these were the first real really cheap uh mono synths um i'm sure people at the time weren't saying well that's the end of the you know that's the end of the mini move that's the end of the odyssey that be, because they all have their place but they all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses and you know as great as this synth you know kind of hopefully will be for the money i see it very much as for the money i think yeah, it's great i, think I mean so. every, every Everything I've heard so far, you have to just go, it, it, it's great. It, it is, it's really good for that kind of money. It's fantastic. But, you know, kind of anyone that's comparing it to the high end instruments, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, a different thing. In, it's, a, it's a different thing. It's a different world. It's, a, it's, it's different. You know, I think people need to kind of get a, a grasp of that. But I think the bottom line is, even if it's only quite good for this kind of money, for the facilities and the, you know, the sounds it's offering, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Just because it means that and it opens the world to another lot of people that can now go and buy proper, you know, a proper analog synth. Yeah, I mean, which is great. Exactly. I know, Dave. You, I, I mean, you must be watching this with. I mean, obviously, Korg kind of really set the bar with the mini log, and that that really kind of peaked. You know, people couldn't believe that you could get a sub five hundred quid. Or was it five hundred dollars? I think it was. I can't remember. I think it was five hundred pounds, wasn't it? Uh, polysynth, and you know that's a great little instrument, really good fun, and that hasn't sent everybody under. Mind you, it's been hard to get for a while. But have, uh, what do you think about this? I mean, is this something that, uh, or have you any questions, perhaps that you? Because I know you, 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 you're interested in the detail. I'd imagine. I really wanted to come on and go. What Behringer since? I've, why didn't somebody tell me? <laughs> <laughs> it is, that would have been much it, more fun. It, it has been quite hard to avoid. I must admit. I mean, it's you know, I, I'm very conscious of it. There's so much of this. Well, A's a load of teasers, and then these new series of other other ones, and then you know, various different nuggets of information that are coming out. It's very hard not to kind of have them just own the front page of every kind of uh, synth related kind of system but it you know you you have to try but uh oh i'm sure that's i'm sure sure that's intentional um the leaks were quite interesting i was a car i was i mean obviously the speculation in the build-up has just been enormous you know is it going to be mono is it going to be poly is it going to have unison is it going to be mini keys you know and then it was like and then of course as ty said it comes down to the ultimate it's like what's the price i got the price right we had a little bit of sweepstake oh did you well done. <laughs> yeah, I, I was convinced it was going to have to be uh, just sub a thousand, and if they were really reckless, it would be like six nine nine. But you see, what's that? Thousand dollars? That's probably going to be about fifteen thousand pounds here. Yeah, isn't well, it, there is that. Months. Thousand, thousand um, bucks is what eight hundred quid plus that, so it's going to be nearer the thousand quid mark, I suppose. Yeah. No, I mean, it, the two questions I really have are um, the things that I want to know. Uh, I mean, I love the fact that it was 12 voices. Uh, for me, it's all about, because obviously I'm fortunate enough to be surrounded by great synths. Character is the overriding thing for me. We'll buy something with character. It's got to have a certain character. And obviously I know it's based on the Juno, which again surprised me because I suppose the Jupiter 8 and the Junos are reasonably similar. It's certainly in uh, some of the components. Uh so yeah, has it got character? And the other one is the DCO two tone modulation. 
Is that like a pulse width, but sort of not quite a pulse width? Yes. I've, I've, I've been wondering myself about it. I mean, it, even it, it does display something like that on the screen. It looks like pulse width, but it, to me, it sounds a little different. I can't really explain it. It, it, so it, it sounds to me a bit like, you know, when you get a, a wave folding in a, a trying, a, a, a sort of, yeah. and you double up, so you get fifths and then octave harmonics. It seems like it's doing that sort of thing at the same time, but in square. Have you got just a yeah. raw wave there? Oh, look one up, just a minute. Here we go, sawtooth, out of, what did I do, did I break it? <laughs> no, I don't know, I hope not, that wouldn't be so good, have you turned it up? Okay. Here we go, I'm starting to move the tone mode now. It has it has that kind of harmonic change, doesn't it? I suppose yeah. it's like an alternate pulse width thing. That's what it kind of sounds like. It's interesting to hear what it does to the harmonic content. Yeah, exactly. It, so, I mean, maybe it's a wave falling thing combined. Sorry, I'm not that well in deep in the electronics. I'm mostly a user of the things, uh, but yeah. And, but and, if you look at the other oscillator, if you hear that that. Pulse width on that, so uh, pulse width modulation of that sounds totally yeah. different. Either that or this. Yeah, there's a, there's there's similarities, but that extra harmonic yeah. makes a real difference. And what about that, Dave? Because the, the other question we were asking about character, weren't you? I mean. The Juno, a lot of the Juno's character was down to the chorus, really more than anything else, and and the nature of the filter, those little kind of corners that you could find in the in the filter yeah. that would just pick out really sort of random harmonics or whatever. Has it got that? I mean, what's the? I mean, just I mean, rather than maybe a demonstration, I mean, your sort of sense of it because you've been doing some patches as well. I mean, have you found that it's got what it, what it's got? Um. I, I'd say the character is close to a Juno character. Uh, but with the other options, you can uh, go outside of the Juno territory. Uh, um, the effects, I mean, the chorus is good. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's as good as the Juno 106 chorus, which I'm in love with. Yeah, that's that's uh, very special, mm, isn't it? That's hard yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, that's hard to beat. But it's still a good chorus, and um, the character also comes down to uh, diving a little a little deeper in the machine, and, and, and uh, um, yeah. Uh, getting the character out of it, but the, the basic, the raw character uh, without effects, it's basically the thing I wanted to hear the first time I saw the machine. I switched off instantly, switched off all the effects and wanted to hear it. And it's Juno ish in its sound, but with the extra oscillator and the tone mod thing, and also the sync sounds really nice, I think. Uh, oh, that's my arpeggio. No, I don't have that ready at the moment, but the, the, the sync is pretty raw. Um, otherwise, uh, it's a modern synth with modern components, so it's pretty hi-fi as well. And the other thing was, okay. uh, there was a question about uh, that came up in the chat room. It's gone past quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, was the uh, there were two because in some of the videos the display was orange, and and now in this other one there it's blue. Is that have you got That's a later blue. you've got a later version of you? So I don't know. It's, as far as I know, I have one of the prototypes. Right. Okay. This one's blue. And bluish, I'm bluish. Uh, sort of, yeah. Uh, the one thing that also comes up is, you know, how much menu diving is there? I mean, it, in basic operation, you know, are you mm -hmm. a, what? Because I noticed, you know, when you are showing the features, I mean, some of the features are obviously hidden underneath in the menu. But yeah. I mean, a, a, yeah. how kind of deep do you have to go to get good stuff out of it, or can you do a lot well, of stuff from the front? You can do a lot of stuff from the front. And when you go into detail, that's when you hit an edit button and uh, have a look at the screen. But uh, you don't have to. You can make a, a, a normal synth sound instantly on the machine. You don't have to go into the uh, menus at all. Right. Okay. Maybe for some LFO modulation here and there, but no. Okay. And Basic and operation how... don't, doesn't need the menu. If you go deeper into it, then you have a look at the menus. Gotcha. Ty, sorry, I heard something there. I was just going to... Um... How how uh, how quick are the envelopes? How sharp are the envelopes? Hmm. This is this is something that 
you know, kind of uh, can kind of make or break us synth, really. Let's see if I can. Do you want to hear that? I have this bass patch, which could demonstrate that. Yeah, just pull pull, pull everything down to you know, pull everything down okay. to, to to zero and just see. Everything down to zero. That's how quick the envelopes are. <laughs> so you get that pop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the one thing I do find, and this is this is a question of knobs over sliders, it's actually harder mm -hmm. to dial in those tiny little amounts. F sliders are really good for that kind of, for, for just, you know, for, yeah. for larger movements. When you get to macro, like the really mm -hmm. tiny amounts, yeah. it's quite, it's, it's harder, nice. generally speaking, to kind of dial very, very small amounts in. Can yeah. you... Can you, because you, it's got like an alpha wheel or something like that on it, can you use mm -hmm. that to dial in specific amounts if you need to kind of get really tweaky and you can't quite find it? you on can. The... Yes, you can. Ah, okay. I've just gone into the, was... the envelope menu, which you don't have to use, but you can. Uh, and in the menu, you can choose the function and you can dial in with the alpha wheel. Yeah. So essentially, when you, when you move, if you move any of the sliders, specific sliders, does the alpha wheel then automatically switch to whatever you, uh, you've just adjusted. So if I you know, move the cut off, does the alpha No, then... you have to move to... Uh, 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 what I see now is you have to move the parameter with the cursor buttons and then to, the alpha wheel. To, to, the, to, the cut to get okay, that sort of level of detail, like. right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. okay. Yeah. And, and uh, how big... Uh, sorry, go. I was just going to say, uh, about how big, are the how, how big is the fader length? The fader That's length, the I'd say, you know... The drums. Um, is it safe to do not as the small as the boutiques? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <as> the boutiques. <laughs> uh, they're a little smaller than the Junos, I think. Uh, what's, it's about the top of my thumb. Um, like this, you know. It's, okay, where's my camera? Like this size? I don't know. <laughs> I should have a, a slide rule and measure them, but uh, it's they're usable. Uh, they're not too small. Okay. Is, what the one the other question that I was wondering about was, um, oh gosh, now it's gone completely. What oh, was it? Sorry. God damn. Uh, oh, has it got aftertouch? <laughs> ah, has it got aftertouch? Again, I I'd, I'd have to ask uh, uh, my keyboard playing friends here because I don't play keyboards, so I never notice aftertouch. One thing we did notice y yesterday: uh, the portamento is polyphonic. So that is something I can tell you. Okay. That should make you uh, happy, Dave, touch, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it has got aftertouch. Oh, it has got aftertouch. Yeah, aftertouch. I, I, yeah, I'm yeah, fairly I'm sure I saw it. I saw it in yeah. a, um, a, a a thing go past on one of those teasers. So, okay. I think I think you need to. I think the point that you made at the beginning, though, about um, about the polyphony is a it's a huge deal. I think this it's almost like. I mean, I remember when I, I think just like everyone else, when I was watching the first teasers, uh, initially I thought it was going to be monophonic. Then it gradually went up to, you're thinking, oh, okay, it's going to be four voice. And then, then you think, oh, well, maybe it's going to be more. And I think 12 voice is, a, is such a great move just from a player's point of view. This isn't from a, a, a tech or a programming point of view. From a player's point of view, I don't think you can overemphasize the, the difference that, um, you know, a, a larger amount of polyphony over in terms of playing and in terms of as, as Dave was saying you were saying in terms of right doing ambient patches and whatever, yeah. the difference is humongous I mean when I work with stuff that's eight note poly even like the Schmitz and things I really get annoyed because if I'm doing things with lots of long releases voice you know kind of just disappearing all over the place and it drives me absolutely mad um you know so so having 12 is a is a, a huge deal absolutely huge deal yeah i think you, that really you, needs if you've got long releases yeah definitely doesn't it yeah, yeah. and for again I, I have to keep saying for that kind of money a 12 voice analog synth is incredible i mean into what else have we got in terms of 12 in bigger than 12 voice i mean we've got an andromeda uh profit 12 but outside of that really in terms of analog what else have we got that is up there with the 12 voice i mean it's there's not many. Yeah, should have should have made it paraphonic, shouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> it might have a mode yes. for that. I love I love that mode. mode. In the whole forum yeah. thing, it's just like, oh, it should have been this and it should have been that and should yeah. and the, my favourite one, in fact, this is what kind of when I stopped looking at anything that other people had written really, uh, was when it was all, you know, Berger are evil and they rip people off and all this rest of it. And then you and 
the boss man comes on, Yuli comes on and kind of goes, oh, OK, so what would you like to see? And then everybody goes, a Matrix 12, an NPC. Da, 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 da. So <laughs> they were all wanting clones, even though they were kind of like, oh, you can't do that because that's just borrowing from that. Really did make me giggle. <laughs> that is funny, yeah. No, that is pretty funny. Um, Can I ask one very pertinent question? So I was at a party full of uh, fairly head musos uh, a couple of weekends ago, and obviously lots of the keyboard players were talking about this and they play with fairly high profile people and the one thing so i was kind of going well you know it's worth waiting because we were discussing various synths a lot of them were saying oh, i want to get a poly synth and obviously the ob6 and the p6 were mentioned and whatnot and it was well it's worth waiting for this and just see what it was and one of the players said i cannot possibly go on stage with my star turn who's quite a big name who's a very big name with the word Beringer showing at the audience <laughs> now i know there's a snobbery value in that but i really need to send him an answer to that question uh, i have a very easy answer to that uh, some of you may know i'm also a sound engineer and that's one thing in the world that fixes anything and it's called gaffer tape <laughs> yay <laughs> Just and there is, I mean, there is DeepMind 12 at the back. There is a Behringer logo, and it's not really big. But gaffer tape is your friend. Well, you see that a lot on TV, don't I mean, you? you? I mean, people gaffer tape up logos on all their stuff anyway. I mean, that's but by, you know, just by, but, um, but uh, as part of a, any kind of, particularly on TV, they just put cover them up. You know, the thing they is hate with this. Place. Yeah. They do, but, but the thing is with this, I think, you know, how many times do we sit on here going, hey, this is a game changer? And we come up with this rubbish all the time about everything's a game changer. But genuinely, <laughs> this is a game changer for no, <laughs> it, for no other reason that it's just opening up. It's something that is opening it up to a new market for people that want well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And that's that's the only reason it's a game changer. It's not a game changer. I mean, all this. I have to. I have to say, there are lots of people that I've seen on these trailers that I have a huge amount of respect for. But using phrases like "this is," you know, "this is," unlike anything I've ever heard before, and all that kind of thing. This is this is marketing. We understand way understand yeah. the way marketing works. This is not unlike. This is not unlike anything I've heard before. Every sound I've heard coming from it, we've heard them, that sound. On something else a million and one times before yeah, but the I, reason this is different is the fact that if this is just this is real analog at a price that realistically you shouldn't be able to afford to be able to get real analog and so if it comes up with even a fraction of the real analog sounds this will end up on stages all over the place and i understand completely what dave's saying because i would be exactly the same but the reality is that i bet you any money within a year of these getting into the stores these will be all over the shop. You go to any yeah. gig, you go to any festival, yeah. these will be yeah. all over the shop. And it will get to the stage where Behringer as a name within synths will just be like every other synth manufacturer. You know, well, the only I think way that's you can... the idea, isn't it, really? To... Lots of people yeah. was lots of people was uh, saying, you know, maybe they should have used the Midas brand for it and stuff, which I thought was quite an interesting observation. But I am talking, you know, very head musos playing with big well, also, name I mean, I guess that the, the I mean that's the one thing about there was that Amazona video wasn't there where um uh you, they, they talked to the, the two kind of key or two of the key members of the team and they're very engineering and kind of come from that Midas thing but, but talking about live that was the one thing I hadn't seen and that's like quick access to program changes so you can kind of you know have a bank of eight or whatever what's the program changing live for, for if you're a live player and you want to go you know a6 b whatever you know or favorites or that kind of thing is there any of that stuff going on i haven't seen that yet at the moment it's just scrolling through patches there's eight uh, there's bank a bit to a b c d e f g and h and each of those yeah. banks holds one in 128 patches right and you can switch banks and you can scroll scroll through the bank i haven't seen any uh patch chain functionality or something like that mm. maybe something Okay, well, that might. I suppose the thing is, if you were doing that, you might be able to kind of put all of your patches on patch one up the back, yeah. so you can flip yeah. banks. Or I, guess, I mean, or I yeah. guess if there's a price, if it's a reasonable price, I mean, well, I mean, if it if it's that cheap or that that low cost, you could probably you know just get a beat step pro or something and send program changes yeah. from it. I suppose yeah. you could do that, but that's the or one thing one that I haven't seen, and I, I suppose that might be an issue for some players. I don't know. Yeah. But how important is how important is that? 
Well, the thing is, it's just it's like kind of old school again. I mean, the thing is, let's 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 remember this is an analog synth, and analog by its very nature is old school. And it's it's like I mean, some of the stuff I've got here, some of the stuff that Dave's got there, that you know, kind of it's things, lovely things that we have now, like as you say, live you know, uh, patches and play set playlists and all that kind of thing. They never had any. They literally had 64 patches, and that that was it. That was your lot. Or some had 16 patches, and that was your lot. And you kind of worked within the boundaries of that. And again, exactly like Dave was saying about, you know, the forums are full of people talking absolute crap about, but we want it to have this, we want it to have that, and we want it to be £2.50. It's the same thing. There has to be a cut-off point where somewhere along the line, they yeah. have to go, do you know what? Yeah, we this, want this, it to this. sound good. We, you know, yeah. We can't have everything, and I think I have to say I think the choices that they've made, um, yes, I think, a good, a good, a good choices. I mean, do you know? Actually, just I came up with something the other day. I was thinking, I can't remember since oh, the JDXA. I was something about com people complaining about the JDXA about how um, you couldn't read the the writing on it, and when you're on stage, it was all this kind of thing about you couldn't read it and the display and all that, and. You kind of thought I went with that, going yeah, yeah, of course, that's really bad. Mm, yeah, the fact that it just sounds crap, it's got nothing to do with it. Um, but anyway, I then got out the JD800, and I'm playing the JD800, suddenly thinking, God, it's really, I can't see anything on this. <laughs> and I suddenly realised that, hang on a minute, all these things that we complain about now, and we think we're justified to complain about, we, if you look back at since of a few years ago. That had suffered exactly the same things, but at the time they weren't an issue for us. And I've suddenly realised that the lots of things that we're finding issues with now on synths, on new synths coming out, most of them actually really are first world problems. They're not real problems. No, They're just because since gen because synths generally so good now, we're almost trying to find things that are wrong with it. Does that does that make sense? You know, because yeah. there's so much great there's so much great stuff out there, and um, the we so, you know, the winch anyway. benchmark gets set lower every year, doesn't it? Absolutely, the winch yeah. benchmark. I like the sound of that. <laughs> that sounds. That's a good. <laughs> that's, that is a good one. And I guess um, also, uh, Alan, uh, we, we're going to break for an ad shortly. And I'll, I'll, if you've got time, I've just asked for questions uh, to come in, and I'm trying I'm to keep up. With, um, excuse me. Obviously, you're amongst a whole load of synth people where you are, you know, when there are people come in. Uh, what have people's reactions been to it there who are, you know, synth heads? They've been amazed, uh, pretty much all of them. Uh, I have one of my co-workers here was uh, saving up for Profit 6, and he now, uh, uh, he doesn't have to save anymore because he's going to get this. Sorry, Dave Smith. Um, uh, yeah, the, the good reactions up, up till now. There's uh, not... Everybody has been playing uh, uh, with it yet, but uh, you know, everybody has this idea in their head. Everybody has had a bare mixer, mixer fail on them at some point in their life. So there, there's also in this community not a lot of trust in the brand, and then this comes out, and it's actually good, and it's actually reliable up till now, uh, really. Uh, I mean, it is a solid thing. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we'll just take a quick break uh, where we have a message from our sponsors. Or we don't. Go on then. Tell me this is, of course, Isotopes Polyvox. Not Polyvox, what am I talking about? Vocal Synth. Polyvox is one of the modules for harmonizing. Then we've also got a uh, regular vocoder module in there. CompuVox, which is kind of more of your uh, maybe sort of Sennheiser type uh, vocoder. TalkBox, of course, for if you want to make that sound without dribbling down your chin with a tube in it. Of course, you can download Vocal Synth for all your vocal processing needs at isotope.com forward slash Vocal Synth. And of course, uh, we did have uh, a competition from last week well, week before last, where we asked uh, you to tweet to enter, and uh, we have a winner. The winner from for uh, episode four five 
eight. What episode we are? I can't remember what episode we're in. Four, five, eight, four, five, nine, four, five, seven. I think it was. <laughs> uh, I, he said it was jo- Jeffrey Vastine, a J V a s t i n e at j vastin uh he said i would use the voice synth in my youth outreach to provide new pathways to creativity which is actually quite a worthy winner so i'm glad that's worked out so uh jeffrey vastin if you want to get in touch we will have isotope pass on uh the competition to you i've just realized i haven't actually got my screen up on the uh, on this i don't think I'm like, oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, but you can also win a copy this week. Uh, they're giving away yet another copy. And all you have to do is tweet the hashtag outside the Vox. That's hashtag outside the Vox, V O X, uh, one word in the hashtag vocal synth to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. That's the hashtag outside the Vox and the hashtag vocal synth, one word to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And you will be entered for the competition, which we'll pick next week. So once again, we thank Isotope for their continued continued sponsorship of the podcast. Right. Let's see. Uh, what have we got? Um, have we got any questions? Uh let me see. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, trying to see what now. Uh, well, we've covered. Has it got after touch? Yes, it's got after touch. Do you know anything about the fact that that because I saw a, a pedal on the back that said pedal slash CV. Does that mean you can feed CV in and out? Is there any of that stuff going on? I'm <laughs> sure that that's that's going to be like uh, uh, expression pedal thing. But normally, yeah, you. I haven't tried it yet. So I'll okay, say, but it's it, might, it, it may be CV, possible. Possibly right. you can have like one CV input. There's not like a, a whole range of gate CV uh, things on it. Right. Okay. Uh, um, and let me see if I've got any other ones here. It seems like there's. Uh, we must have answered. Oh, maximum LFO speed. That's a good question, actually. How ah. far up does the LFO go? Are we talking audio rate? Yes, it does go into audio range. Right. Okay. It's not all. Not very high into audio range, but yeah. And can you and modulate I've that? I've been thinking. I've been thinking of trying out this is something I might do this afternoon because I think you can let the LFOs track to the key number. Oh, so you could so get you them. could use them and use some SFM sources. That would be interesting. Oh, that is sad. That does sound interesting. Uh, I have to one, try no, it out. I'm not sure. Another question that's come in uh, via... Sorry, they're going so fast now. Uh, can the LFO be key tracked? I think I just answered that. Oh, yes, you I? did. Sorry, yes, you yes, did. Yes. Uh, is, yeah. is there an audio input? Because a lot since have audio mm-hmm. in for processing. No. No, no audio input. Okay, that's good. Um, we also uh, had a question. Uh, sorry, these are going by really far. Oh, yeah, th- there was talk about Wi-Fi and uh, uh, iOS editor. Um, I, I, when I was doing the video uh, uh, earlier in uh, Midas headquarters, there was an iPad editor. I haven't seen it yet, uh, and at the moment I'm not. I, I don't have that editor with me. I've just been using the synth itself. But there is supposed to, there's an iPad editor coming for it, and I that was news to me that there's Wi-Fi in the thing that you can actually. You don't have to cable up your iPad. You can just Wi-Fi to the machine. That would be very nice, of course. Well, of course, uh, and and I did. I'm sure I read. In fact, I posted it in one of the stories because I read it somewhere on one of the one of the 190 pages of Gear Sluts posts that there was. Uh, RTP MIDI, which means that you can basically, we use that here to kind of move stuff around, you know, uh, network to various computers. So that's basically a MIDI protocol over Wi Fi, which OS X uses. And also on Windows, you can get a little uh, widget that will allow you to read those MIDI network sessions. So it does allow you to be able to then, if presumably if the iPad is connecting over uh, Wi Fi, then that is MIDI. So therefore, it could be possible that the whole thing could be Wi-Fi MIDI, which would be kind of interesting. I'm not sure I'd trust that in a live situation. I don't know, Dave, would you, would you go for that? Why, wireless MIDI live? No, but I mean, useful in a studio. Oh. It has. Yeah, with plenty of time. Oh, it has, is it? Apparently so. Uh, let me see, whatever. Um, and there's no CV output. That was another question. No, no. OCB, yeah. Okay, well, that, that would be kind of difficult with a, with so many voices, I suppose, wouldn't it? That would be actually really difficult. So uh, let me see. If there Can are I other... just ask about the effects? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, because they kind of branded uh, on one of the teasers about the effects being TC Electronic and um, Clark Technics. Uh, do you have any idea which bits are sourced from where? In other words, the reverb, I mean, I take it the reverbs, you would expect to be TC Electronics, so it would be really nice if they were Clark Technics, so, but I doubt that's actually the case. Do you actually know? There's one, 
There's one reverb in there that's named TC Deep Verb or something. So that would be okay. actually a TC thing. That would be that uh, one. There are other reverbs that haven't been TC branded in the naming of, 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 of the, of the uh, machine. But uh, yeah, I don't know where they're coming from. Uh, you'd have to ask somebody else. But I okay. do think the, the effects sound good. I mean, do not expect a Bricasti. But no, 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 no. <laughs> Proper, proper. <laughs> oh, here's a here's a question from uh, Juan Rodriguez in the chat room. Can you cross mod the oscillators? Yeah, haven't found that. No, don't think so. No. Okay. Well, that's a question that's being. Uh, there was a sync, yes, but cross mod, no. Okay, right. And what's the? That's another question. That's what is the the resolution of the faders? Because presumably, if they're MIDI controllable. They're mm -hmm. either going to be CCs or NRPNs or 7-bit. Yeah. Do you know what the internal can, resolution is? I don't know what the resolution is. You'd have to have to ask the designers, but I can let you hear, you know, you do a filter sweep. Okay. Know? Wait a minute. Uh, find a... Quickly find a preset uh, that's, that's dead. Almost, 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 almost. Oh, well, while yeah. you're doing that... Have a bit of res, yeah. just so we can. I'm not hearing any anything too. I mean, it's really hard to tell over Skype. Was anybody else doing? I'm not the, hearing was, any zip noise. Was anybody else doing uh, the, fil the filter vo the filter mouth there? <laughs> Because I, I just looked and I saw a call. I'm going. <laughs> it's like it's like using a wah wah pedal. <laughs> um, okay, hold on. There was another question I was going to. Oh uh, yes, somebody uh, in the chat room on YouTube wants to know: Has it got uh, what are the MIDI connections in, out, and through, or just in yes. and out? In, out, and through. Ah. Am I right? Yes, three of them. In, out, and through. Okay. Jolly good. Right, uh, let's see what else have we got uh, coming up here. Uh, not so far-fetched. Gosh, I can't believe that there are any, uh, uh, there aren't so many questions. Just tell me if the wood is real, somebody wants to know. Is the wood real? Mm, I don't think so. Ah, but we don't know if this is the final <laughs> version, I suppose, so it might be. True. I'd, but, like I said, it's a prototype. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, hold on. Uh, uh, word. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, noise type. Um just white noise. Just white noise, you think? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, they make snappy percussion types as we covered that one. Oh, yeah, the sequencer. Is the, sequ the sequencer. Is it a note sequencer or a, what, what is it? That, it that is, it is a value sequencer, so to say. So it's more like a control center sequencer. I'm, I, I'm sure you can root it to note number, but it's, you know, it's not like you, you type in a, a set of notes and use that for a sequence. You have to. Um, Set a length, and for each uh, step, you can then type in a value. It's uni uh, it's bipolar, so you can go down and up, uh, and then you can uh, add, uh, change the step length and the step value, and the total length of the sequence. Yes. Right. Okay. And those are user programmable, presumably. And, and yes. what? Oh, there was something else there, that you mentioned in the video, which was chord uh, the chord functions. That looked chord function. There's there's a regular uh, chord mode like a chord memory as you find on an OBX or a Poly Six uh, uh, that that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean a Poly Sixty One. Um, there's also a Poly Chord thing. I haven't used it yet, but what it seems to do is you uh, press a chord and then assign it to a key. Press another chord, assign, assign that to another key. Press another chord, assign that to an, another key, and uh, now you can make chord progressions without being able to play piano. Blah. Can you then arpeggiate those? Mm. I know, it's just, just getting... Possibly. I haven't, I haven't dived into that yet, but, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. I see no reason why you couldn't then use the arpeggiator. Let's Probably, see, yes. is there anybody... Uh, mono sequence or a poly, we covered that because it's more of a control sequence. Uh, uh, how responsive is the aftertouch? I think that's the thing, because, I mean, that's going to make be a feel of... I, I'm guessing you could dial in sensitivity I, and, and what have you. Yes, but. you can. Yes, so the, yeah, after touch to pitch, but there's uh, the various options to uh, decide how uh, uh, the after touch affects other stuff. Uh, as I said, I'm not a keyboard player, so I don't really use after touch myself that much. Gotcha. Uh, you have to find somebody who can actually play keyboards. 
Uh, okay, uh, Dave, you were just enjoying your. Uh, it was that a wasp or a gnat there? It's a wasp, isn't it? Yeah, it's just been fixed. And is it? Oh, and a and a spider. Ah, a wasp and a spider. Oh wow! So I was just I was just hooking them up to make noises. <laughs> because <laughs> i do that a lot you know <laughs> right got you um and what about patch changes because presumably if it's got to i mean i guess the analog stuff would be quick but if it's got to load dsp slots and stuff is it instantaneous do the patches hang over it's, there's a slight uh step when you move from one patch, patch to the next right it's not instantaneous but very quick right okay Gosh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we need to cover, really. I mean, it feels like uh, that that we've kind of answered. I can't see any other questions. I'm getting questions that are coming up again that we've already answered, mm. so that's why I'm not asking, the, uh, asking them yeah. again. So, I'm, uh, And I've got two chat rooms, and they're both going like this. So that's why I'm <laughs> slightly... Uh, I, I am slightly uh, um, uh, distracted. So, so how, how long have you had it? I've had, had it in a couple possession? of weeks now. Okay. A couple of weeks but uh, I've seen it for the first time months ago already. Oh, yes. There was also this other thing that came up um, uh, was um, they were talking about designs for a desktop, and they got posted. Yeah, this is something that got saw. posted on the on Gearslut's thing, which uh, yeah. uh, this is at Ask Audio. I've got it somewhere, but I just thought I'd throw it. So the possibility for a rat, that looks quite sexy as well. I mean, yeah. I'm get, I know, Ty, does that sort of thing interest you, or do you want to stand in front of the keyboard with the keyboard? Would you be... Does it, I've got too many keyboards now. From this point onwards, it's it literally is at the the case now where any keyboard that comes into something has to go into storage. So uh, I can find rack space more than I can find mm-hmm. keyboard space now. Um, I can't. I haven't got desktop space either. So it's literally kind of rack space only at the moment. But yeah, I mean, I, uh, would I mean is this is you know would this be of interest to me? I'd, I'd have to have a play with one because I can't see how it could really, there's not much stuff in here that it could kind of replace or kind of, you know, that couldn't be done with other stuff in this place. But 99% of people don't have places like this place. And if I didn't have this kind of set up, right, then okay. I'd be, I'd be joining everyone else and I'd be ordering one now and, you know, it'd yeah. be, um, it, it would, it, yeah, absolutely. And I would probably go maybe for the, for the, um, desktop for the rack man. Um, but I think the nice thing about it is the I think the way that it's set out and I think the way that they've started out copying, uh, you know, Juno 106 and then moved away from that. As much as people are going to sit there, as you say, saying, you know, Behringer, they do nothing but copy and rip people off, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's a great way of doing it. The difference is that most people have done it and then stopped uh, and then stopped. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I mean but you know, could have all moved away. But you then, then you have to say, but it's it's an interface that you look at and you know where you stand. I mean, some of the stuff like stuff like the Andromeda, stuff like the Modal, you know, that gets criticised because the actual interface is they're trying to do something new, they're trying to do something different, and people basically sit there going, we don't like that. <coughs> you know, we want we we want something we're familiar with. A great example is the sledge. You know, the reason that the sledge works is the fact that the actual interface is basically a mini moog. It's ripped off a mini moog and you can sit in front of a sledge and know like that exactly what to do and where things are. And I think I think they've you know good for them that they've basically taken a one oh six and gone, this is a one oh six, we'll just add a few bits on and you know and people know any any synth player that knows their salt could sit down at that synth and within minutes know exactly what they're doing and what they're up to and that that is fantastic you know um but i think the desktop yeah looks good it looks like it could be an interesting little thing i mean i don't know how where have you got to go if you've just priced your sort of 12 voice at 999 i mean it just doesn't seem like there's much leeway there perhaps uh the one other question well apart there was rather an amusing question which was does it have boss and over and foxtrot uh, which i will ignore but the other one was uh does it uh what uh, the faders, do they snap or do they move through or can you set them how you want? Um, normally they uh, pick up uh, from... Uh, you move them and you pick up the value, Yeah, I think. Um, I'd have to look in the global menu if there's... Oh, haven't looked into that. Okay. But I, can I, I come back at that? 
Yeah, no, I'm sure you'd come back to that. I mean, I think that's okay. probably something, well, if it's, yeah. if it's, yeah. I mean, one of the things that was interesting that in the video when they were talking to the engineers, they were talking about how one of their priorities was to get the scan, I don't, is it scan rate or the refresh rate up yeah. so high yeah. that it was, in, everything was instantaneous. Because I'd imagine with most yeah. synth, with a lot of synths, you know, that all the control surface has to be scanned at all times to kind yeah. of pick up controls so that they can then be turned into control voltages or whatever they need to be. And they, they've made that very, so it is, it's snappy in that sense, right? So it, yes. instant- I mean, we've come a long way from a profit fight with a Z80 in there. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it should, you should be able to do that. Of course, it takes work. It's scanning all all that all the time, and uh, yeah, it feels very very responsive. So I uh, um, never noticed like, okay, uh, oh god, and I changed the value really quickly there, and uh, suddenly it's something totally different. No, no, I haven't had that feeling while while I'm working. And on the it. the million dollar question is because I'm going to ask it: if you've had it for two weeks, has it crashed yet? No, it hasn't. No. Okay. No, that's good. <laughs> that was certainly very interesting. No, it hasn't crashed. Oh, uh, no, it's no, kept his memory fantastic. and uh, no, no crashes. Right. Okay. Well, it feels like, gosh, it's five o'clock already. That's been, um, well, it, it has been a, a, a sort of mono, mono timbral podcast, really. But, I mean, <laughs> given the amount of kind of interest that there has been in this whole synth i would try to i've tried to kind of keep it keep it turned down but i just thought well you know it's all out there and we had an opportunity to see it so it's been great that you've you've uh, been able to join us Alec, and answer some of those questions it's been very much i very much appreciate because uh, in case you hadn't known Alec is actually in the middle of organizing and running a, a week-long uh, electronic yeah. music festival so i suspect are there people pounding on the door to come in and use the jupiter 8 Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, well I got to go back to those guys and uh, you know look after them and okay. explain them how to work the syrinx and uh, stuff like that. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, Ale. Um, we it's been a pleasure. We better uh, we better let you go then. But thank you for joining us. Well, great, great meeting you. Meeting you guys. Thanks, yeah, Great meeting you. Okay. Nice one. Thank Bye. You. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye. Well, there we have it. Um, that was. Uh, I, I think we've pretty much covered that. As I said, I think I might have said at some point. I'm hoping to get uh, one of the first production machines so that you know where I can review it because I hate reviewing stuff that you know isn't working. Because if you say something, uh, well, this isn't working, they say, oh, it will. You can't really not say that something doesn't work, no. and then you know they they said they'd fix it and they didn't, and then you look like an idiot. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get one of those soon. Uh, and um, But I hope in the meantime that's answered some of those questions. Anyway, outside of all of this stuff, how's everybody else doing? Anybody want to talk about anything else for a few minutes? Or just, just to sort of balance it up slightly? What could we talk about that would be the Polyvox? The, polyvox? the new Polyvox? <laughs> yeah, that came up in the chat room. <laughs> Did you see that the, the new Polyvox... Uh, it's like the desktop thing. Yeah, it's not really... I mean, the thing about the original Polyvox is it was such an imposing and ugly thing with sharp, ch- crappy plastic and impossible-to-read controls, but yet made this sort of hideous but beautiful really sound at the it, same time. And they do sound... Lo- yeah, no, they do sound amazing, but they're, they're, they're something of a unit... But they've, they've really... They're, this seems like an awful lot of money, unfortunately, and I, I don't know. I think they've tried to use 70%... Uh, genuine Russian parts, um, but they've changed the form factor. It's kind of got a lot smaller, and it's more of a desktop thing. So, I don't know. I have think, you have you ever played one time? No, I haven't. And it's one of those things that uh, uh, every time I kind of hear one or see one, and I just think I just like the fact that it's it tried to do something different and it tries to sound different. But I think. I think you've hit the nail on the head, really, is that if they're charging, is it $2,000 or £2,000 or 2000 whatever it is? I'm not sure. They're charging for it. It's, uh, uh, you know, I know it's boutique, I know it's bespoke, it's, but it's it kind of seems to me like too much money, really. I think bearing in mind that for that kind of money, you could buy a, a Dreadbox modular, um, which uh, they, they kind of, it's kind of, the Erebus is kind of, I think is a similar kind of uh, principle to the Polyvox. Just it's trying to be a bit dirty. It's trying to be different. It's trying to move away from what we accept is the norm or the expected. Right. And um, so if I had, if I was going to buy one of those, I would buy, um, I'd buy a Dreadbox modular rather than a Polyvox. But if they could get the price down, I think it's, I think it's, you know, I think it's great. Yeah, you and know? it's nice to see that the original design is involved in it and what have you. I know, David, yeah, have you played a Polyvox? Yeah, Wills. 
Ah, okay. He loves it. That's that's kind of his one of his favourite toys, isn't it? It's funny, isn't it? When you're in front of one for the first time, even if you know your way around a synth, you just look at it and just go, I don't know what any of this is at all. I have yeah, absolutely I like no idea what's going on. I really like that. But when, when you find that filter, I think Will refers to it as, um, it goes into dog mode. It just starts kind of howling like this mad dog and you think it's, it's never going to come back. But it, it sort of does. It's very interesting. Built the build quality is just like oh it's shocking isn't uh, it it's like plastic I I, I, pl- the plastic reminds me of stuff that you make out of starch from rice <laughs> yes it's that incredibly kind of weird thin brittle yeah interesting yeah, like molded think, fried egg <laughs> i've kind of always wanted one but wanted it with a wanted one with a midi interface so i didn't because that keyboard's quite horrible so in a way this is a kind of you know sane idea it's just that they don't have the manufacturing capabilities of a huge organisation like Behringer. In fact, that made me laugh when the guy in the Behringer video over here was saying, he was the head of programming at Midas, wasn't he? And he was saying, I can't afford, uh, you know, an expensive analogue synthesiser. I was like, what? You need to get a pay rise, dude, because you've sold 500,000 of those X32s, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I, I, I would, I'm, I, I'm going out on a limb here, but I'm guessing probably the engineers aren't on a profit share, but I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, just go, just go ask for a pay rise. Oh, there's, some, look, there, there's, just... a, there's a bloke sitting down playing the, playing the deep mind. I wonder if he's making a noise. No, he's not. Ah, oh, sorry. That feels a bit uh, voyeuristic there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, that's kind of it for this week, I think. That's probably uh, all we have time for. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much again to Alec. That was very kind of him. Uh, and, you know, I should stress, he doesn't work for Behringer. He doesn't have to do this. So if you're kind of going, they need a better demo guy, yeah, you're probably right. He's not the demo guy. <laughs> He's just a guy who was involved in, in the teasers and seems to have, uh, is also doing patches as well. So, you know, hence. And I'm guessing if he's only had it a couple of weeks and he's had to organise the festival, he probably hasn't really had time to get his teeth fully into it so kudos to him for stepping up there very kind of him indeed um definitely so yeah uh, mm. what are your plans then anything have you got have you got time off now ty no oh. um i'm i'm kind of um balancing a couple of things at the moment i'm trying to you know come with loads of tv and uh tv stuff uh but i'm also doing i think i told you nick i'm doing a project with mid at the moment ah uh, okay which is a which is a big project, long term, going right through to well, end of next year. Wow! Basically. But uh, it's a biggie, and uh, yeah, very exciting. I've been on it now for four months, and wow. um, unfortunately, that's why I'm not kind of around because most of the time, you know, kind of midg- midgies up here on a Wednesday. So ah, okay. <laughs> um, so if you want me, John, one of these. That's oh fine, yeah, that'd but, be. I mean, uh, if, you, if you think he's, I, I'm sure he must have lots of really fascinating things to say. I don't know how techy he is, or whether he's up for that sort of he, thing, or whether he's more know, of an he's, arty fellow. He's not that. As, I think Dave knows him. Dave's worked with him, haven't you, Dave? I think he's not. Yeah. He's not a techie. He's not a techie at all. But uh, really great guy. <laughs> really lovely guy. There's not many people I could actually work with in the studio and have sat behind me all the time. But he's great. Yeah, it's really excellent. Good. Oh, well, that sounds good. And how about yourself yeah. then, Dave? You got uh, got anything sneaking up, uh, sneaking out? Doing doing any uh, anything you can tell us about? I mean, usually your stuff you can't tell us about because it's well, oh, it's not that on. it's illegal. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just under wraps. <laughs> yeah, it's all part of Operation U Tree. No, um, <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm working really hard, and unfortunately, I can't say anything about anything to do with anything. In fact, there's three projects that are going on in my head and in reality that I can't say anything about any of them. It's just a bit weird, isn't it? It is funny, isn't it, when you get to that sort of situation. I, I, I can tell I kinda, you. At that, at that party the other week, which was, was, it was great. It was Dale's 50th. Ah, Dale, who so, we've had on. He was bass player and MD for Amy, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there were a lot of people from my past and, and his past there. It was really it was fun. But it was like, so what are you doing then? And got, pretty much everybody's like, I'm in rehearsal with... Uh, oh, I can't talk about it, because uh, it's not 100% yet. What are you doing then? Oh, we're developing... Ah, oh, I can't really I can't really say. It, <laughs> so it's just like, should we just have a drink and just get pissed? That's nice. Did, uh, actually, because I noticed that uh, you're, uh, you had a weekend um, without fam. So was that the party weekend? or Because I didn't get the invite to come to your house for a massive bloke. I nearly came of... down to see you. Oh, that would have been uh, awesome. But... 
I didn't because I saw you had posted saying that you were having an exceptionally busy week, and I thought, and I, I had a whole week without. Wow! The missus, oh, bad the timing. Hit. So it was just like, but actually, it's weird, isn't it? Because the older you get, and the more kind of responsibilities you seem to acquire—not willingly sometimes—but um, you find that you've got less time. I love, I love working late into the night. That's you know, I really am a night owl, and you know, I'm in here every morning at you know nine thirty. I'm working definitely, but I love kind of going on into the night turn the lights down low and just get into the whole thing particularly when you're creating patches and sounds and stuff like that and it gave me this opportunity to uh, just immerse myself in it which is the first time i've been able to do that in such a long time because normally you know there's somebody at the door or a parcel needs collecting or you know you've got to go and pick somebody up or my tea's ready or whatever not that i'm moaning about that but yeah I it know was what you mean. it was quite a fascinating middle-aged experience it's a bit like being young again so yeah i, made, <laughs> I thought you I were looking sh- younger <laughs> i made a huge mess in the house uh even though i had to clear it up on the last day but um and i took the wasp and the spider to bed and had a threesome Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of legs and arms tangling up there i'd imagine if you get my i did put a picture of it on facebook saying well needs must <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ask any questions about ports or anything like that. I just I'd think... really love to have taken like some of the really lovely, like the JP8 and the eight voice down. And I was going to set up a kind of dinner table and have them in the chairs. And it was like me having dinner with three supermodels or something. You know? <laughs> Are you in a smoke in a, in, a, in a smoking jacket with a glass of port and a cigar? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah me here couldn't possibly be excellent brilliant oh thank you so much dave i, I seem to have I, I, I seem to have a delay on my voice which is really disconcerting as the last video it was out by a second i do apologize if that's the case it might need to be oh look there's somebody else playing it look they're still going they're all back in jamming now so maybe this is going to end up on a record somewhere i feel very naughty doing that I wonder how long I should leave that on for. Anyway, thank you, everybody. It's been lovely having you. Uh, of course, uh, don't forget, I, I should actually just uh, reiterate, if you want to uh, take a chance at winning the um, Isotope Vocal Synth plugin, for a vocal processing plugin, please do join us on the competition. You need to tweet the hashtag outside the Vox and the hashtag vocal synth to at Sonic State and at Isotope Inc. And then you will be entered and we'll pick a winner next week. But thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ty. Uh, your internet has held up. So thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll thank see you. you again soon. Hopefully. Anyway. And also thank you very much, Dave, too. Thank you. Good fun. Okay, that's it for this week. I will leave you with... Uh, well, let's leave you with... Um, this guy here, whoever he is, and we'll fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see him enjoying the... Uh, that's not Alec Alders, but he is playing the DeepMind 12 somewhere in the Utrecht. <laughs>